Okay. Okay. Guys, we got to be honest here. You all know by now that rent ready is an awesome property management software that Corey and I use to elevate our business on multiple levels between being landlords and managing our tenants. But this isn't just an old podcast ad about how you can manage all your units, maintenance, screening, leases, tenants, and using rent ready's mobile app. This podcast ad is a secret. That's because this month, Rent Ready is releasing a game-changing feature that will save you a whole lot of time and headache when it comes to crunching numbers on your rentals. While we can't share it just yet, make sure you stay tuned to our show, The Weekly Juice, for the surprise reveal. Because we have it on good authority that Rent Ready will be letting our listeners know once this top secret feature is ready to go. In the meantime, if you're looking to get started using Rent Ready's powerhouse of the platform and get signed up, saving 50% off any Rent Ready plan, you'll just have to use the code JUICEPOD. That's J U I C E. POD on their website. That's 50% off any rent ready plan when you sign up using our code JuicePod at rentready.com. Go to R E N T R E D I.com and use code JuicePod, J U I C E P O D, for 50% off any rent ready plan. If this is your first time here, welcome. During our shows, we interview successful entrepreneurs and investors to spread knowledge, advice, and actionable tactics to help others in the pursuit of financial freedom. We discuss successes, failures, systems, motivations, experiences, and key lessons learned along the way in the hopes that these stories help you along your journey. Tune in every Wednesday to get your weekly juice. If you've been here before and like what you've been hearing, please subscribe, share with friends, rate, and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. That goes an extremely long way for us. It's simple. Just click on your podcast app, type in our podcast name, The Weekly Juice, click on the reviews, and let us know what you think. The more ratings we get, the more eyes we'll get on our show, and in turn, we'll be able to provide you all with high-quality guests. You can also find us on Instagram, at Weekly Juice Pod, for daily content and personal finance tips to assist in your journey towards financial freedom. Welcome back to the Weekly Juice, where we talk real estate, personal finance, and entrepreneurship. Your boy's back. Oh, from a vacation. From a nice vacation, mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, we were, my family and I were in Ireland last week. Absolute blast. Um, it kind of ties into our why, right? Corey and I, part of this week's episode, we want to kind of do a reintroduction. We have a lot more listeners and, and followers on on social. So thought we should kind of kick it back, do a little reintroduction on ourselves, why we're doing this whole thing, and then talk about our financial philosophy, right? And our investment philosophy. Yeah, I think it's just good to give people a kind of an overview of us, why we're doing this, why we decided to start it. And then like from the perspective of 29 and 30 year olds, like our investment philosophy moving forward and what our goals are. Sure. I mentioned a reintroduction, basically wanted to give you guys a little bit of a background on us. If it is your first or second time listening and you yeah, just like, don't who know who are them? these guys, well, what are they, what are they even talking yeah, about? Take what are they blabbering about? Yeah. Who are these, who are these stallions over here? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. Tell so them. So I think it's just important to kind of give some perspective and just like who we are and why we decided to do this. Ryan and I are um, real estate investors. Uh, we're kind of financial independence advocates. We live in the Philadelphia area. We met like 10 years, 10 ago. years ago. Uh, we went to Temple together, college. And uh, we just, we were kind of thinking one day, like we, we talk about this stuff all the time. Why, do, why don't we start a platform that like allows us to kind of organically network with individuals who are steps above us selfishly maybe even like trying to help us out but then also like just have this platform where we can just talk about what are our experiences i think there's a lot of value in in doing that and talking about who we are and and where we're trying to go i think that people listening will get because we're put it this way it's a real life story about we're not commercialized we're not like these big wigs like people can relate we, that's why we're sharing it's like we're yeah. we've seen so many stories on on instagram or, or heard them on other podcasts of people that are our age or, or or maybe even five ten years down the line but like they're beginners and they're trying to figure out how to get involved people a lot of people want to get involved they hear all these things but like they're like what are the actual steps so what are the real life stories so that's what we are aiming to bring with our podcast right where we're interviewing people that are successful that have done before us but also pulling the commercialization out of the way and saying like hey let's kick it back to when you first started how the hell did you even do it and then how did you scale your tactical, business tactical real information that gives people an idea of like this is what people are actually doing we we we're thinking about start you know opening or selling like an ebook and a course to kind of like consolidate all this information but really our goal is to just help people like we just want to help others who i know the position that you and i are both in 24 25 years old we're like we're working 
we just got started in the career. Like, what are we actually doing? Like, what is this? And I think that that's, that's, and as we grow, hopefully the people that are listening to us grow and we're talking about new and better things and, and just, we're lifting up people around us yeah. and we're learning too. It's like, we're, we talk about like we're rookie stage two, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Or a little, yeah. probably a little bit more than that. Now. Stage I, three. I, I think it's maybe four. We're evolving. <laughs> um, Either way, I think it's it's awesome just to kick it back to that. If you haven't listened to previous episodes, we want to give you a little background on who we are and uh, why we're doing what we're doing. Um, and every like 20 or 25 episodes or so, we'll do one, maybe even like every 30 or 35, we'll just do one, just you and I, just because it's like... Recap when we're right. Yeah, at. recap, exactly. Uh, maybe our portfolio, what we're doing, and then, but most of our content is evergreen with investors um, and just like really cool people that we want to interview that are entrepreneurs that are in real estate, that are in personal finance, that are in the financial independence movement. They're doing big things and hopefully bringing you value along the way. Absolutely. And if you want more information, you want to see more of like a hand to hand walkthrough on like our thoughts and our everyday things. We post every single day on Instagram. Every day. So it's our handle is at weekly juice pod. It's and it kind of goes hand in hand with the weekly juice podcast. So go check that out. You won't regret it. And, uh, let's connect. So, um, Right off the off the rip, we've had a lot of questions on index funds and real estate and um, a lot of stuff on social that have popped into questions. So we wanted to put them into this episode so we could answer some things for you guys. Um, but first off is I want to touch on index funds and kind of why and how they play into my portfolio. So specifically, um, I have a 401k, I have a Roth IRA, and then we have real estate um, and a brokerage account as well. But my many of my index funds are predominantly stuck in or put into my Roth IRA. I love the Roth IRA. Uh, it's a tax advantage account. And specifically, I, I recommend this for anyone that's just starting in their investment journey. Um, it's one of the, the most advantaged accounts that you could possibly have. You know, it's a good account when you, when the government makes you, makes a limit on it. You can only invest $6,000 into it per year. Yeah. The tax free. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. So, um, Index funds, essentially, rather than going out and picking stocks, right, like throwing darts at the stock market and hoping I can pick the next Amazon, Google, I decided to take the approach of, like, let's get a basket of funds that tracks a market, right? So the ones that specifically I like, and this is this is not advice, this is just, like, what I specifically use, so mm -hmm. this is kind of how my portfolio is shaped, but... I think it's good for people to hear that, just from... We have a lot of listeners who are, like, similar to our age, just for people to, like, understand what are you doing, how is it going to help them in their journey, and... Uh, Go ahead, man. Absolutely. So picture, kind of for our visual people out there, picture like a pie chart, right? And I'm going to break this thing up into little slivers. So the majority, let's say 70%, I have invested in VT Sachs, which is the Vanguard, Vanguard Admiral Fund that tracks the entire U.S. stock market. So, you know, that varies between 8 to 12% over the last, I think it was like 30 years. So specifically, I love that. Um, there's a, a couple more that you could uh, maybe touch on is a V... V Fiax is the S and P 500. So those kind of go one and the same. I do some research to see which one best suits you, you and your portfolio. And then you could interchange the VT Sachs for the, the V Fiax. But, um, I absolutely love those. So that's 70% of my portfolio. The next 20% is the bond. So it's the U S bond markets. It's V B T L X. And I do this is because we're young, right? Like I'm in, I'm just hit 30 and well, actually almost going on 31 here. Okay. And, um, I don't need, I don't need to be that conservative right now. I like longevity and, and like, uh, I guess what are the, the death, um, basically Mortality people are, thing. yeah, people are living longer than they used yeah. to. Right. So I think I have a little bit more, uh, risk, I'm r more risk averse at this point. So, um, 70% VT Sachs, 20% VBTLX. And then the last 10% is VTIX, which is the total international stock market index. And that's just to diversify <clears throat> outside of the United States. To give people an idea of, I think it's great to share like, you know, how you're diversified, but like how much money are you specifically putting away a month into this? I mean, I know the Roth is like, there's a, there's a minimum, but yeah. like how much of your portfolio is going into this? What do you feel comfortable like putting aside? I think there's a lot of relation that people can take from that. Sure. Their own. So great question. I, what I would say, what I'm personally doing is $500 a month maxes out your Roth IRA. Roth, that's yep. 6,000 bucks a year. So that's, if you can get to that, like that's a lot for some people, right? It like is, just totally. starting out. So but think about that compounded over 30 years. It's 
It's if millions. You, so uh, let's just say starting out fresh, if you can get 500 bucks in there and max out your $6,000, you're, you're at the max. That's what I do. So you basically, you're just going to take that $6,000 and multiply it out by like where my 70% is going to, of that 6,000 is going to VT Sachs, 20% is VBTLX, and then 10% VTIX, which is the total international stock. And this is separate of your 401k, right? Completely separate. Yeah. And I'll talk, I'll touch on that next too. Yeah. But I also want to talk, we talk about real estate all the time and people are like, Hey, how can I get invested into real estate? But, um, I don't want to be as hands-on. You can do that. They actually have a, an index fund for a REIT, a real estate investment right. trust. And that's awesome, I think. And that's something that I'm potentially going to weave into this little like chunk. Of the way I look at that, right, is I think like later in life, I feel like if you have a huge sum of money and, <clears throat> and it can be compounded, then you're really going to see those returns. I actually sold a stock portfolio to buy real estate. And I think that there's, there's just, everyone has a different strategy. You can just solely do what you're doing and like, and just put 500 away every month. You turn around 20, 30 years, you're going to be in good shape where you can draw down off of it. But we, I was looking at like real estate is like the, the way for me to gain cash flow, And, and, and so I, I decided to sell like 40, $50,000 worth of stock to go buy real estate to get that kind of monthly return. But I, uh, it's awesome. Yeah. I know. I mean, we, we talked, I think one of our really early episodes is, uh, Chris Philbrick. He talked about it and there's a lot of people that have a ton of money saved up in their 401k and their IRAs. And he was talking about how you or explained to us how you can draw off that and invest it into real estate and make a way bigger return. Right. Yep. It depends on the deal. And if you know how to run your numbers, that's kind of why we're interviewing all these rock stars essentially to figure out how they did this and, and how they find these big exchanges and, and big, um, percentages of, I guess, profit, right? So the the ticker for the REIT that I that I personally like is VGSLX and that is like I said once again a um it's an admiral fund for for Vanguard. Now, there's a bunch of different ways you can invest in index funds. Um there's mutual fund versions and there's ETF versions. So specifically there's two companies that that Corey and I like the best and that is Fidelity and Vanguard. I love Van Fidelity. And I love Vanguard. That's funny. They're both low cost, yeah. um, essentially like vehicles or uh, companies that you can use. So there, I mentioned mutual fund and the ETFs. I just want to explain the difference. So mutual funds uh, usually have a big investment minimum, like $3,000 to, to purchase these ticker symbols, right? Um, and they can only be sold or exchanged at the end of the trading day when the price is, is fixed at the end. Where the ETF version, they have slightly higher fees, but you can buy and sell throughout the day, right? So if you see at like two o'clock, it's, it's at X dollars, you can just buy and sell and go from there and it's it's you're buying shares essentially you're not you're not saying hey I have to hit this three thousand dollar minimum you can say okay I have five hundred bucks this the shares at two fifty I'm gonna get two shares of it so that just is a way to get in if you only have like say like five hundred bucks as opposed to three thousand bucks um, there are a couple books that I want to recommend we talk financial independence all the time and people are like hey how'd you guys start and like where are you getting these resources we've probably drilled at home a million times on our Instagram. Yeah. But there's uh, a couple of books I want to talk about, and they've I know they've touched both you and I uh, heavily here. The first one is, um, it's called The Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins. This, and I'm bringing this up now, is because it's directly correlated to index funds. That's all it talks about. And it talks about how they're so valuable and tracking the how tracking a market is, is more efficient than trying to pick and hope for a home run winner. Um, he also has a blog. It's jlcollinsnh.com. He, awesome dude older guy, I think he's in his seventies with his wife. He actually wrote a bunch of um, like transcripts to his daughter and like how he recommends she would invest as a kid and then put it into a book because all these people on his blog blew it up. And uh, now I, I believe it's one of the best sellers, but yeah, it's, huge. it's an amazing book. Um, love, love that. A second book is I will teach you to be rich by Ramit Sethi. This one was amazing for me. It's, it's literally like a handbook, a six, six week program of how to get your financial house in order. I actually haven't read that book, but everybody that I talk to about it, just, they just rave about it. Dude, it's amazing. He's whole, the way he talks is just hilarious. He it talks, it almost it seems like he's talking to a millennial, just like the humor he has. Um, he's the no BS guy, but, um, when it comes to the finances, he just tells it like it is, but he, he draws, draws some humor in there. Um, it talks about managing your credit, optimizing your bank accounts, setting up your investment accounts, what to invest in and how to invest. I know a lot of people like they hear us talking about, Oh, these are great funds, but I have like no idea how to do it. Like, how do I even set it up? It is, I'm going to make it literally a, walks you through. Yeah, it literally walks you through. <laughs> it has a picture on how to do it, but we can make a reel on this probably too. It's yeah. like, it's very simple. You just log on to fidelity.com or vanguard.com and 
click create an account and it'll walk you through. There's also YouTube videos. Like what I would recommend is how to open up a Roth IRA with Vanguard on YouTube. I promise you, you'll find 50 videos right off the rip that shows you how to open it. Yeah. And Vanguard or Fidelity, both of them will take you through like a series of questions that kind of like identifies what your risk portfolio is. They can walk you through. Our suggestion is just like, just open up an account and get started. And then you can always change it, tweak it later. If you want to talk to a financial advisor or if you, you know, wherever you get your financial advice from Instagram. Um, but the point is, is like, once you start, you're going to be in kind of in the ballpark of, of where fidelity thinks you're, you're going to be based on where fidelity thinks you should be based on like, you know, you answering your like time. Yeah. You're essentially like your timeline or your, your time horizon for yep. investing. Um, it, I will say there's a, a big conversation we could have in there is like, do I get an advisor? Do I not get an advisor? I'll just say, make sure the advisor is a fiduciary. Like if you don't know what that is, look up what a fiduciary is, but it's basically like, like they, it basically means that they're for you and they, they are not going to, they basically have to take your whole financial house in order and make sure it's best for you when they recommend investments. And a lot of people just go in and get an, an advisor, or a planner and think, Hey, cool. I don't have to think about it anymore. I'm just going to give this guy my money and he's going to invest in X, Y, and Z. All the reading I've done in the financial independence movement, everything's very simple, whether it's real estate, whether it's, um, index funds, whether, whether it's, um, I, I don't know, whatever you want to talk about in investing, but basically keep your house in order, but know what's going on in your life. Like you can't just hand off everything to someone else. There's so many fees that could potentially hit you down the way and then take millions out of your pocket. Yeah, exactly. And I think that it, we always, there's a saying out there like personal finance is personal, right? And it's, so true. So if you have to kind of like, if I'm opening up an account or I'm starting this financial independence journey, I, for me, I kind of want the control of like knowing where I'm going and then having somebody as an, as an advisor to just kind of guide, I wouldn't hand it full over and just assume that somebody's going to know what your personal like beliefs and goals and, 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 and what you're striving to do. Totally. And I take it from us. Like I've had one and you've like, I, I believe you've had one, but, um, it's, you know, I started checking into the fees and I'm like, holy shit. Like I, I rolled over a couple my, my wife's IRA and a couple other things in our, in our portfolio. And I'm like, I just want to have control of this. Like I, yep. because I'm now educated on the subject, we've been doing this for a while, but I've been reading up on this stuff for like five, 10 years anyway. So, um, I just think it's important to take control of your finances and don't give it to someone else, uh, completely, unless you have gone through the process and vetted them. And, and there's plenty of like key ways you can look up how to, how to vet out an advisor or a planner. Mm -hmm. The next book I want to talk about is set for life by Scott Trench. It's, Dude, it, I, I'll let you I was kind driving of talk about this. while I was listening to this book and I was like, like fireworks were going off in my head. It was just like, he spoke to what I needed to hear as a pulled on your heartstrings. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It talks about how to dominate your life finances and, and essentially your version of the American dream. Um, Corey, we we've mentioned this previously, but I think for, for the new listeners, like Corey has a good story on his Mercedes that he had and this book kind of made you ch sell it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can briefly go through it. Like I, I talked about it a couple of times in the episode, I was 22. I kind of like planned out buying a Mercedes and it was a used one. Um, so I think it, it was in 2015 that I did this and it was a 2012 Mercedes. So it was a couple years old and, uh, I just was like, you know, this is going to fulfill me in some way. I thought that like having this, this was like fresh out of school. I got my first job. I thought I was like cool. And then I wasn't, uh, but <laughs> like, pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> but like, so I, I, I bought the Mercedes. I was like, oh, 350 a month, you know, I can handle that. And then, you know, what I didn't realize is all these other, you know, insurance, gas, everything else that kind of piled on top and I ended up spending like $800 a month on this car that I just, once I was driving, I did love the car, but it was like, I was like, I'm using my active income. I'm, I'm working to try to, to try to this like lifestyle creep was already implanted. So when I was 22 and, and I decided rather than letting it get really bad and like continuing on that, I was like, I'm going to sell this Mercedes. I'm going to downgrade, so to speak to a lesser car. And then wait until my passive income or my real estate portfolio, whatever it may be, has the ability to pay for those luxuries. And that was kind of like my, the decision that I made. It was an aha moment. Yeah, yeah. I think that book, it really speaks to that. It gives a lot of tips and tricks on how to, how to just like trim out the, it's not the little things, right? We talk about the latte factor, right? Like it's go get your damn coffee if you want to have a coffee, but it's the big, it's oh yeah, that's, food, yeah. transportation, shelter. Like those are like your three big things, how you can essentially like trim one of those out or two of those out and, and have them paid for by, you know, passive income essentially is like you're getting closer to financial freedom. But I would check that book out. Also, we interviewed the five couple, Josh and Ali Lupo. Um, and their story like mirrors this Scott Trench like, like lifestyle from from uh, Set for Life. So if you want a real life version of them, Josh is kind of like Scott. Dude, he is. 
I hope you're listening, Josh. Because I know he's you like Scott. He, no, he, he is like him. I would check out their page at the Five Couple because they. I'm telling you, it's like when I think of this book, I think of this, this couple, and they've transformed their life, and they're just they're killing it right now. So do that. Nice little plug for them. Last book is one of our favorites. I think it's the cornerstone for pretty much the financial independence movement and, and, and just like real estate investors in general is rich dad, poor dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Like, yeah, like, come on, come on. <laughs> like we could talk about this book to its end, but, um, based- it's a little wacky these days, but, but you got to read this book. Speak. He's just like a little, like, I think he's got to a point where he's like, I can say whatever I want, no matter like, I don't have any consequences for it, but his old, like him coming up this book will shift your mentality completely and for us it opened up a world that we didn't even know was there and we're like all right i guess i'm just gonna work until i retire at 65 and like just do what everybody else around you is doing and then you read this book and you're like wait there's like a secret path that wealthy people take that you had no clue even existed and this book kind of you said it was a cornerstone it's like it just frames it in the way that you're like Oh, okay. Now I understand how to go forward. If you talk to many entrepreneurs, especially like, let's just talk real estate investors in, in general, every single person that we've asked who your favorite book is or one of your favorite books, they try not to say this one because it's, it's just it's mentioned so much, it's mentioned so much, but it is their favorite. And it's, it's basically, the, like I said, the cornerstone, the rock, but basically it advocates the importance of financial literacy, financial independence and building wealth through assets, right? Like assets, versus real estate, yeah. starting and owning, owning businesses. And then, um, increasing one's financial intelligence, right? You can't just like rely on going to a job every single day and like not reading, learning, educating. Dude, think about this. Once you learn and understand what an asset actually is, it it totally opens doors for you. And I was looking at, I track my net worth. I think I probably track it more like... Uh, Religiously? Like yeah, meticulously. Meticulously than yeah. you do potentially. But like I, I'm, I'm tracking it and I was looking over the past six months and I did nothing in the past six months, I mean, I shouldn't say that, we're building a real estate portfolio and we're doing a lot of things, but like in terms of my net worth going up by fifty to $70,000, I didn't do anything to have, make that happen. It just happened ba- by the real estate that I already owned in the appreciated market. Appreciated in value. Appreciated in value. And like, I'm not selling it right now, so it doesn't really matter. Like it's kind of a fictitious number, but I'm saying once you understand that asset and you're like, I can just buy holding this and waiting and owning it, your net worth starts to increase and then you have that equity gap and then you can start to play with it and pull money out and live off of it and do all these things. But having understanding of like, oh, this asset actually makes these things go up in value and by owning them, you then become wealthier. It's, it's like, dude, it's, it's incredible. crazy. It is. It's wild how it works. Um, I will say, so a lot of people kind of, I know this is kind of touching back to the beginning of the episode, but it's like what what do you guys invest in or like what vehicles do you do you use for your investments so let's just talk we have the the Roth IRA we have um the 401k through work and then also we have real estate and there's a couple other things woven in there but um I want to talk about like if you have a if your work we would call it your your career your do- job your w2 offers a 401k plan and they have a matching bonus you absolutely have to take care of take care of that and like oh. make sure you're matching that it's, it's free, free money it's free money so let's just say, for example, they match up to 5%. That means you're going to want to put in 5% of your every single paycheck, and then your company is going to match that exact amount of money and invest it for you in you know, your pool of investments that are held within that 401k. Most jobs have specific plans already set up. They're, they're, I just want to make sure people understand what we're saying here. This is like if, if let's say you make you know, $70,000, $80,000, whatever it may be, if every paycheck... $125 or $150 comes out at 5%. Literally, the company is giving you your 120, well, you're paying yourself 125, and then the company is saying, here's another $125. It's literally free money. It's a no brainer. Yeah, you have to do it. The hard part is figuring out, I guess this could be deemed as the hard part, is like figuring out what to invest in within that 401k. Mm-hmm. Most companies have a plan already set. So you can't really waver from that. But if you can, there's a lot of different ways you can play with it. Um, I would say, like, all, another thing that's talked about in Ramit Sethi's I'll Teach You To Be Rith, Rich is, um, aside from index funds, is a target date fund. This is like the most basic, easy thing you could that's do. That's a real set of forget it right there. You literally, it, you pick the a date you're going to retire. The, uh, say for us, 2055, I think is the year. There's a target date fund that invests, it's called like the, the uh, for Fidelity, it's like Fidelity Freedom K5 2055, something like that. Mm-hmm. Basically, it ch- it starts investing you and changes your allocation, your asset allocation throughout each year 
to make you more or less risky for uh, stocks and bonds. So let's say, for example, like if you did it today, it put 90% of your of your assets or your um, investments in stocks and then 10% would be in bonds because you're um, you essentially have more room for risk as, as you're younger. But it, it grow. Look up target date funds. They're kind of cool for someone that's basic and they just want to set and forget it and not think about it. It's not going to give you a crazy return. It's probably, I don't know, anywhere from six to twelve percent but yeah. um but that's the one thing that's like your security blanket for later in life and I, I think that there's a lot of real estate investors out there that that are big time that don't even use their 401k because their real estate is their retirement and i totally can appreciate that and i think that that's like that's noble i just think when you're getting started this is something for us that we look at like you just you do it, you have it when you're 65. It trains extra. Okay, you have a couple million in there when you're 65. Like, great. Like, it also trains you to automate your savings and put things away. Yeah. And like, hey, I'm going to invest. I am an investor now. Like, like you're not going to miss that money. I promise you, yeah. if you just set it and you start getting used to it, you're like, oh, okay, I only make X amount. I don't make $1,000. I make 800 that extra 200 But you're paying yourself. That's the thing. There's so many people that don't do this, man. And they're like, they don't understand. And we just want to... To let tell me, people let right me, now you have to do this. Just do it now. <laughs> let me let me give you a fun fact here. If you can get a hundred thousand dollars invested by the age thirty five, you'll retire a millionaire by age sixty five without this. adding a penny more, dude. You don't have to add a penny more. A hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money to get it's saved up. But think about how like there's so much that is learned throughout this this growth phase here, right? Like you're learn essentially learning how to save money, how to get creative and increase your income. There's so many things that like you're getting better at along the way. When you get to that hundred K cool, you can leave it in that one account and then start something else. Go into real, maybe that's in your, uh, in your Roth or it's in your 401k. Great. You're good. Now go into real estate, build something more and you can keep pumping cash into that. But, uh, I did a graphic on this, check it out on our, on, uh, our Instagram at weekly juice pod. And it gives you a breakdown of like how exactly this, this works out. But to give you an idea, the S and P 500 and the total U S stock market have just about brought an eight to twelve percent return over the last thirty years. I think I talked about this earlier. So look into VT Sachs and VFIX as the ticker symbols that I talked about, and just like keep pumping cash into things like that. And it's instead of your savings, you're having your money work for you. And uh, Albert Einstein said this right. Like the the famous quote here is, uh, "Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it." He who doesn't pays for it. And so it's very true, especially when you're young, like time is on your side. I have so many people coming up to us. They're, they're, they're DMing us all the time. They're, they're in like 50s and 60s. They're like, I'm done, dude. I can't do it. I'm like, no, you have time. You just have to put a little bit more cash in. Yeah, you have to up your uh, investment allocation. Right? Exactly. Like if, this is almost something you want to teach your kids. Um, one of our friends, Patrick, um, on Instagram, he posted another graphic and I thought it was incredible. And it's about an 18-year-old. If you're 18 years old, you open up a Roth IRA and you just put an initial investment of $1,000 and set up automatic deposits a month, 200 bucks a month, nothing else. Leave it in there. At age 56, you'll have $1.1 million. The cool part about that, bro, is like I have, so my brother's 19 and he's, you know, probably taken some information from me along the way. And he, I don't want to, well, I'm going to say it. He has tens of thousands of dollars in an investment account, you know, close to, probably 30 or 40 thousand dollars he's 19 so like i told him i was like dude listen to me whatever work you're doing probably working as a server if you put 200 dollars a month away imagine if we we didn't start investing send 19. him the graph it's a no-brainer yeah. you go to bankrate.com and do a compound interest calculator yeah he will have millions and millions of dollars if just, he just siphons a give us one thousand dollars of that and then just just commit to 200 dollars per month yeah. For the rest of your life. Or not to the rest of your life till you're and then you can put 55, more in 56. When you start making more money. That's, yeah. the, whole, that's the whole it's it's discipline it, about it. Right? Dude, it's incredible. And your brother's killing it for nineteen too. He's I uh I, my younger brother, I think he's twenty two now. I gave him the I will teach you to be rich book and he's reading it and I'm, I'm like I keep texting him like he has to be three months into his job to get his four one K. I'm like, dude, text me the second you hit that three months because I'm gonna set you it's up. So funny trying to get my brother to read Rich Dad Poor Dad. He's like, yeah, dude, I read another three pages today. I'm like, dude, I will murder you. It's so <laughs> it is so hard to care though when you're that young. And and that that's why it's like for us, it's like it's things I wish I I I told you about this. I my finance professor at 19 told me, dude, you just have to put in open a Roth IRA. He told me this exact thing. Put X amount in, you'll be rich by 65 if you just put it this one time payment in here. 
nope, didn't do it. Yeah. And now I'm looking back, I'm like, wow, I'm 30 and I'm obsessed with this stuff now. And <laughs> yeah. I literally, now we're just trying to give it to our younger brothers or like people that are listening. So it's never too late though, man. If you have Unless kids, like set 100. them up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty fun. Um, so also one more, I have, I have two, two more things I want to talk about here. Cause we get this question a lot is, um, should we pay off our mortgage first or invest? Cause there's people that have homes. Ooh, it's tough, man. That's like a personal thing. I, what are you, what are you thinking? Well, I have some I facts. No. I found some facts. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if anyone follows Leandra online, uh, female in finance. She is a yeah, beast. She's, rock she's a beast. Yeah. Um, but beast one, in the best way possible. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. just a, a stud. So, um, <laughs> Let's just yeah. give you some numbers here. If you decide option one to pay your mortgage off first and invest after, this is assuming you have a three hundred twenty thousand dollars home, the interest rate's two point seven five for thirty years, and your mortgage payment is roughly around thirteen hundred bucks a month. So there's your picture. It's for seventeen years if you put two thousand dollars, as opposed to thirteen hundred dollars, an extra seven hundred bucks a month. In third, and, and basically that's like a 13 year gap of like investing, right? So like uh, 17 years, you're just going to keep pumping out. You'll pay your mortgage off early in 13 years. 30 years later, your investment account would have grown to about $701,000. The option two is pay the mortgage minimum and invest. So pay that 1300 bucks for 30 years. You take that $700 that you would have put into the mortgage and invest it. This assumes that, that like she said, a 10, a 10% return. In 30 years, instead of that $701,000, you would have 1.443990. You essentially are doubling Millions. your money. You're, du- you're doubling your investment by Here's just... Here's what I'll say. It's opportunity cost. About that. Yeah, the opportunity cost. If you have a mortgage that's in the twos, threes, and fours, you're essentially later, because of inflation, in 20 years, you're paying it down with cheaper... Like, it's cheaper money now than it will be in the future. So like, in my opinion, I don't think you should pay your mortgage off. That's just my opinion. I don't think, I think you should invest the money. And it's like, if you have a 2.75% interest rate, like that money is, it's almost free money. Like it's, it's so little percentage. If you can make 15% in real estate or you can make 10% in the stock market, like why are you taking that money and paying it down if you can make such a big return, hundred like, percent agree. There's some people that are very um, frugal, and they're like, and I get it. There's that's, um, that's their personal thing, like budget okay. dog. That yeah. was that Brennan. Yeah, that was his thing. His He's like, I just want to pay off my house and have peace of mind with it, and then I'll continue my investments. Granted, he has a lot of like cash coming in from side yeah. businesses and, and his and his W two. Yeah. So, um, but there's there's people on both sides of the spectrum. But f- for us personally, like you can invest while you are paying off debt, and that's and I would call it good debt when you it's the rest. the what we're what I blanket suggestion if you have credit card debt pay it off we we spent put money on credit cards every single month we pay it off our business our personal life that's the debt that's bad debt pay that off that's a Dave Ramsey thing obviously student loans is tough you know you kind of have to just pay them as they come if you want to attack student loans don't think there's anything wrong with that but it may be like four five six percent too if you can make a higher return in the stock market definitely do both at the same time again this is just like personal thing we don't have student loans i do have student loans they're very small though so i would like when i give advice about that i typically turn to other people just because i don't have enough to like no you just got to look at the opportunity cost and like see what percentage it actually is like what how much interest are you paying per month credit card thing is a no-brainer like i don't deal with 25 percent interest just pay your damn credit cards off don't and if you don't have the money don't spend it like the there's a lot of people that you know and we, we get in the trap of like, or a lot of people do is like, hey, this has like a bonus. It pays me cash rewards every month. Dude, it, you're going to just keep spending. You're going to keep using that credit card even if you don't have the money just to get that cash rewards. But you're you're actually spending more money than you would if you just use your debit card. Like you're not going to, say you go to the grocery store and you're like, okay, this I'm typically spend about 200 bucks. And um, if you have a debit card that gives you like X percent back on your, uh, on your grocery purchase, like let's say 2% cash back or whatever it is. You go in, and you're like, ah, I, you know, I only have 200 bucks in my checking right now, but I have this, I have this credit card. No worries, I'll spend three, three fifty today, just because I, you know, I, I want this pizza or I want this, yeah. whatever these veggies. Um, you're, you're literally spending 150 bucks more that you don't have in the hopes of getting two percent kickback on that, on that grocery store um, purchase. And by the way, you still get the, you still get the percentage back when if you pay it off too. It's like a loophole, not a loophole. No, it, it is, but I'm saying like. Y- people are going to end up spending more with their credit cards. That's yeah. like the trap that everybody gets in. It's cool that they have these perks and you can travel the world and do all this stuff. Like 
I would I recommend f- like checking out the blogs and things that like teach you how to use these. Um, and in the Ramit Sethi book, it teaches you how to use your credit and build it up. And um, I just be wary of these credit cards, and especially if you're going into like Gap, Old Navy, never sign up for those damn cards. That yeah, they're terrible. It's horrible. But um, enough on that. I think let's talk about um, house hacking, right? That's that's another thing we talked heavily on index funds and then kind of like the stocks. Um, let's get into real estate really quick here. It's like how how have you implemented house hacking? What is it, and how has it allowed you to kind of shave a lot of your, um, I guess, a lot of your housing costs off? It really helped me get started in real estate investing. It was like the number one thing that I was able to jump in, and the reason why is because I think I was spending like. Seven hundred and fifty dollars a month in rent, which isn't terrible, right? I was, ro- I had roommates, I had three roommates. You were one of them. I was, <laughs> right? And our producer was another one of them. Um, so I think we're sending like seven hundred fifty dollars a month in rent, which isn't terrible, right? Um, and there's a big movement out there. Like I think a lot of millennials are going to be renters, and I think that that's like totally fine if you want to rent and then, but also build a real estate portfolio on the side. Like I know a lot of people that do that. So anyway, seven hundred fifty dollars a month in rent, and then I was just like how can I eliminate this rent cost while also building equity? So I bought a home for $250,000. My mortgage payment was like roughly $1,500 a month. I had roommates essentially cover that. I was a three bed, two bath. I had two roommates. They were paying like twelve, thirteen hundred dollars So I was paying, I lowered that $750 a month in rent that I was paying to $200 a month. And then I also was able to take that $500 a month and put it aside, right? Every month. And then put that into my next real estate deal. Um, but also building equity in the property where I now, you know, I just talked about this. My net worth has probably increased or it has increased significantly because the, I'm paying my mortgage down and the property is probably appreciated by like a hundred thousand dollars or so since I bought it in three or four years. It's incredible. It's one of the things that we recommend for people that, you know, I guess they're first starting out or they, they want to really take control of their finances and, and their investments is like, if you can house hack and eliminate one of the big, there's big three. There's I, we talked about this before: housing, food, and transportation or yep. car. And if you can knock out your housing, like th- think about your mortgages, like that it's is like the where, number one thing that well, it's the biggest expense that, that you have as as a, an American, right? Yep. And so. it, it comes down to learning how to to run the numbers too, right? And like execution. There's a lot. Like you can talk about this. And like, oh, that sounds like a great idea, but my wife would never let me, or my girlfriend would never let me. Yeah. That's a big thing and you have you have to have that conversation. But it's if you break it down for them and show them the numbers and what you're gonna save and like what you can have, what the life you can have down the line. Yeah, I think a lot of people unfortunately make excuses for like reasons they can't do things and like i think that this whole game that we're talking about is just like security for yourself, peace of mind for yourself, like what's the type of life you wanna live and like at a certain point you just have to make decisions that other people are not making. And that's that's really what this comes down to. If you wanna escape the lower class or middle class. And I think the middle class is a trap too. Like it's great. Like you can, ha- but like if you're making $150,000 a year and you're spending $147,000 a year, you're not really building anything. You're not escaping. So having that discussion with somebody like if we house hack and by the way, house hacking can be buying a triplex, living in one unit and renting out the two other units, probably making money while you're doing that, you're not sharing a living space with somebody. I happened to do it where I had a three bed, two bath, and I was sharing the living space. But I had roommates that were like, I'm friends with. And uh, I was young before I'm, you know, I'm not engaged or anything. So it's like before I had that part of my life. You know? Yeah, it, it worked. And we, we've seen it happen time and time again. There's a, uh, I mean, we could point you guys to a million books, which we already have. But um, I believe it's it's just called House Hacking by Craig Kurlop. Uh, it's a Bigger Pockets book. Yeah, I or the, like the, the guy guide then. to House Hacking. Yeah, it's a really good book. Craig Kurlop. Um, yep. Recommend that. He's also the Fi Guy on Instagram. We're just we're throwing around all our friends' names here today yeah. on the episode, but it's good. So um, I want to just touch on this because we throw around for people that are, are new to this movement, but we always throw financial independence around, right? So what is financial independence? So the answer to that is it's essentially having twenty five times your annual expenses saved up right so essentially what that means and financial independence is basically saying like hey i have enough income or investment income coming in or passive income coming in that it covers all my expenses that i i'm work optional right like you're you're independently free of your finances um and so with that let's just take let's just say for example you spend sixty thousand dollars a year on on whatever this is is our personal goal right in our real estate portfolio we're trying to build up a portfolio that Brings in one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year in cash flow. Sixty thousand each. Sixty thousand each, so that it covers our expenses. And it, look, we're learning this. It takes a while to do that, and you can't always predict cash flow. 
but like the the longer that you hold these assets and the further that you go into it the more kind of forgiveness that it gives you in in the sense that like okay you have to stabilize you have to get to a three five year period of owning these assets but like w once you start making these you know fixes in your property and taking care of the big things it really starts to pay you so sorry i just wanted to no it's cool we are definitely want to talk, chat about that too i just yeah. like the basic like elementary level of it is like there's two ways to look at it and this is how we look at it like one is having 25 percent of your annual expenses saved up or like in an investment account so they pay you know they can essentially you can draw off that so if it's sixty thousand dollars that you spend every year you need to have 1.5 million dollars invested right now flip that to the the uh, real estate and side. Can we explain the four percent real quick? The whole idea is that drawing down, you can take four percent each month of your portfolio, um, well, and it pay, it'll pay four yeah. percent. But like, you, if you're making eight or nine or ten percent, you're the whole idea is that you're not going to lose that money because you're only drawing half of the of the investment return that you're making. Now you have to have enough money to withstand like a dip in the market. You know, you might have a down year that's fifteen percent, but on average, you know, if you have a fifteen percent down year, which is uh, a correction, a pretty serious correction, almost like a recession. If that happens, you know, just based on history, and this maybe not is going to happen in the future, but you're going to have a 23% year. You're going to have a 31% year, and it's going to average out. But you have to have enough where that you're able to withstand like the dips. It's a great, great explanation. And also, like on people are like, oh damn, I, I you know, I it's going to take me years to save up to 1.5 million. Okay, here's another way. So for us. If you want, if you want to just find a way to cover all of your monthly expenses, here's exactly this is a big motivating factor for you and I. This like is those. what we like, and so when you're running real estate numbers in, in our deals, like you, you go for cash flow, right? It's income minus expenses, and there's a lot of intricacies in between. But let's just say our goal here is to find de deals that pay us 500 bucks a month in cash flow, right? So 500 bucks a month per per property. 500 times 12 is 6,000. Multiply that by 10 properties, you get your $60,000 a year. So you need 10 properties essentially to reach financial freedom, at least in our in our like blueprint here. So either do 25 times your annual expenses or 10 houses, that cash flow at 500 bucks per month, there's your 60,000. Sorry that was so long-winded and hard to explain, but um, we basically, this part lays into our real estate portfolio. Corey, you were touching on it briefly. We each want that 60,000. So we're, we're aiming for that $120,000 a year in cash flow. So that way we're financially free without, you know, needing that 1.5 mil. Yep, exactly. And I, it's good to do a blend of both, right? Uh, we, I've just, I've discovered for me personally that I think the real estate that gives you that cash flow kind of advantage is the best way for us to get there. And I think that it you know to each their own on that because it talks you talk about loan pay down possible appreciation what are the other uh, the tax benefits, tax are, benefits incredible. are unbelievable and i don't i'm not a cpa so i'm not going to go totally into details on that but you can like essentially write off a lot of expenses for your property and uh it's not a way to like make money essentially but you're paying a lot less in taxes i mean there's people that have a, a massive portfolio and they pay no taxes and it's an incentive given from the government that's like we interviewed the Stealthy Rich, um, Chris from the Stealthy Rich, and like he's like, the, the government picks winners and losers in business, and real estate has been chosen as a winner. And it's like, okay, I'm not going to try to like complain or like mend the system. I'm just going to say, this is what's been dialed up by the, the government. I'm going to go use that to my advantage. Right? hundred percent. It's like, I, I, this will be one of my core three that I, I passed on to my kids and, and, and teach them is like real estate needs to be a part of your financial portfolio. Like it, it just I, has I to be. So, yeah. And it, it, ours are long-term buy and hold rentals. We're potentially getting into the short term. Um, we're getting yeah. excited about that, but I want to touch on one th last thing. Uh, we're at the end of the show here and um, we won't do the, the normal. I won't ask you the, the core four <laughs> in the last drop, but I do want to talk on partnerships because they get a bad rap. And they, they really do. And yeah. uh, you probably weren't I've been told by a lot of people never to get into them. Never but get look into them. look at us now. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so uh, you weren't expecting me to bring this up, but I just, for me, it's been one of the best things that's that's ever happened. Um, most people tell you they're not worth it. They're going to get sour at the end. You guys are going to fight. You're going to lose all your money. There is maybe, there is a chance of like the relationship breaking, right? But as long as you have it written in, uh, you talk to a, uh, I guess you want to call it like a, a real estate attorney or an attorney and you have things in writing, you're, you'll cover yourself on the legal end. So I recommend doing that. But here's what I recommend. Why the, the pros for me for having a, a partner, it's, it's just, it's way more exciting along the way to share things with people, right? Like you're not... Uh, I can't believe how hard it would be for me to go to my nine to five job and then wake up either at 5 a.m., 5 to 9, work on building a real estate portfolio or like nine to five and not being able to 
talk to anyone about it and like bounce ideas off. I need, I mean, it's just, I think it's, I think it's amazing to have like, you have two different perspectives and maybe, maybe your partnership is bigger than two people, but like using two people as an example, you have two different perspectives and you have the ability to balance each other out. And that's why going into a partnership with somebody who like thinks differently than you, but also has similar goals. And that's like the, that's the biggest thing is like if you have a different perspective that you're able to say, oh, I didn't think of it like that. Or how do we approach this conversation coming up? Or, you know, it's it. There's just so many benefits, in my opinion, to like having two heads is better than one. And if you have two different skill sets, it really helps because there's there's certain things you don't want to just keep keep talking about for hours and hours. You want like to pull something off someone else's plate and like just like numbers is your forte. Writing is my forte. There's just like little tiny yep. things in there that like go a long way. But um I personally think you need to find someone you trust like family. Like you're going to be sharing your finances. That's the most important thing. It's not like you're just going to, there's like, um, the, uh, what do they call them? Uh, of, uh, joint venture deals, right? Where you find someone and you, you have them jump in a deal with you. That's like, that's not a partnership every day. We're building a business together type mm -hmm. of thing. It's like, okay, that's one real estate deal. We need to pull some cash. Can you lend us some money? X, Y, Z. So there's two different distinctions there. Um, there's a quote that I want to read because I love it. And I think it applies to us. <laughs> It's your network is your net worth. No, we beat that <laughs> shit to a dead horse. We're not using that anymore, but it is true. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And I think that applies to basically the reason why we're doing this whole thing. We've interviewed so many different people that are so successful in real estate investing. And we've gotten so much better by bringing people together. If you want to go by ourselves, okay, we go read and like try to go by ourselves, but people lift you up and bring you to their level. And it's just, I truly believe in community and the relationships. And I think that's 100%. what this whole thing's all about. Yes, I know it's a mic drop, but uh, there's so partnerships can bring more cash, right? Cost savings. You can hold each other. Hey, dude, what are you spending this month? What am I spending? Like, let's hold each other accountable. Mm -hmm. More business opportunities. Our networks. Think about that. It's expanded spider web. It's insane, right. dude. You and people. Then you get all stars in five different buckets. You could get people all across the states that are investing in different parts, and they they have rock star teams. And it's just because of one relationship, you've built another team. Um. Moral support we talked about, new perspectives, and then obviously uh, the tax benefits are massive. So um, either way, I think today to was a, like a good episode just to like give you guys an idea of our personal philosophy. We thought it was cool for just to get a, maybe like what we're thinking as 29, 30 year olds. Like what, what are we doing? What is our approach? There's so many people out there that are like us. Maybe you're just getting started. Maybe you're ahead of us. We always think that there's opportunity to take some bits and pieces of information from people that are quote unquote above you people that are below you and honestly just tell you real stories real interactions with like what we're doing and i just think that being that authenticity having that and just showing people like we're making mistakes every freaking day and we're kind of enjoying it because like we know that we have this end goal and we're getting maybe three steps forward two steps back four steps forward one step back and you're kind of just chopping that block and, and i think that I, we want to just be transparent with people and just say like look this is how we're doing things and I thought we had just have a cool episode of just like our investment philosophy and our strategy. Absolutely. Now you guys know what we're about. It's it's like a pretty simple formula. It just it takes a lot of work, and we're all about building our network. So please reach out if you have any questions. If you want to network, if you want to talk about potential deals, anything like that. Um, I know we have a lot of new listeners, and, and the audience is growing here pretty rapidly. So we're excited about it. Excited about the future, and happy to help along the way. Your boys uh, are gonna keep bringing it too. So let's do it. Juice boys are back here to stay. <laughs> let's get it. <laughs>